Hello and a very warm welcome to this edition of Mac Junction. What I'm going to do this time round is show you a piece of software called iDrum. It's made by a company called iZotope. They make other uh, sequencers and other types of drum machines and various other uh, software too. But I'm going to focus on this one here. This came around actually as a result of me trying to find a half decent drum machine and some way of at least producing my own rhythms as opposed to perhaps using preset loops, which albeit that you can manipulate to find this method is a bit more, if you like, from the ground up. You can literally build, totally design the type of drums and percussion that you want yourself. It's very well featured and there's lots and lots of features on it, but all I'm going to do, just for kickoff here, is just to show you how to put together a basic rhythm and how it can sound. So what I need to do is get started, obviously. So let's go and clear the decks by looking at a new project. All right, so nice and blank there. Let's now go into the samples. And now as you'll see here, I've got hats or hi-hats. I've got kicks, which is like bass drums. I've got percussion, which is well, obviously percussion effects and snares. So these are the types of parts of the percussion or the drum patterns that I want to build up. Now let's go first of all and build up our bass drum. Now there's several here that I can use. There's a whole host of different sounds, some of which I know what they sound like and others I've no idea at all because I've just downloaded so many of them which is which is great so let's go to this one here I've selected a, a sound there we can hear it if we just preview it here okay and again so that's sounding okay what I can do with this sound is I can go either left or right I can pan it anywhere between there and I'll come onto that again in a moment probably when I'm mixing it down a little bit I've got an individual volume control for this sound I can also isolate this um, or I can actually cut it out by using the buttons here and I'll, I'll demonstrate that once we've got a percussion or drum beat going. So let's now put those in one every four beats and what I'm doing is literally drawing that in and as you see here as I can vary the volume or the intensity of that sound. Let's play it down here now we're starting the process of building up this rhythm. Now I can make this sound a little bit more exciting than just thumping away at a 4 beat there. So, And you can see I've just varied the intensity again of that sound there just to build up a subtle roll. While that's playing, let's go and get our snare drum. Again, it's a similar thing. It's a folder full of different samples. So let's get here. Dork snare sounds kind of fun. Let's try that one. I can vary the volume of this just to mix it down a little bit. Okay, that's coming along quite nicely. Now let's go for a hi-hat sound. And what I can do here is I can place them where I want to build up a different type of rhythm. Or I can just simply left click and hold and draw if you like. You really can spend quite a lot of time doing this and playing with this and that's probably quite a good thing because you start to come up with better and better types of rhythms. Just putting that variation in there on this snare just to make it sound a bit more exciting. Okay, let's go back in now and get our percussion sound. Again, this is where you can have a bit of fun. Now, that can be quite a jarring sound. Now, if for any reason I don't like that sound, and it does kind of it does kind of get on your teeth a bit, that one, doesn't it? I can change it to another one. Perhaps it doesn't really fit very well with this rhythm, so let's go and get another one. Let's just try a clap. The 
possibilities are really endless here, as you can see. So there you are, you've built up basic rhythm. Now, there's no limit on how many tracks in this case, which it, these are, is just individual tracks, that you can put on here. So you can start to really develop some quite subtle patterns in there by using different percussion effects. And you would take a great deal more care than I've just done here. As you can see, I'm literally just throwing this together. But you can see that quite quickly, you can start to come up with something that you can actually work with. So, you know, you don't have to have a, a certificate to, to be a drummer up on your wall there. You don't have to be a drummer at all. I'm certainly not. And uh, some would even argue not even anywhere close to being really, <laughs> really that musical. Well, as I showed you earlier on, you can do quite a lot with the drum pattern certainly when it comes to how you're going to mix it down. And still using these four elements here, these four tracks, I'm just going to take you through some of the things that you can do that I alluded to earlier on. So let's play the track first of all. Now, if you're listening to this in stereo, then right away, let's start playing around that stereo field. So if you put the bass drum to the left, perhaps the snare a little bit to the right, you start to separate the sound up quite nicely. So the hand claps maybe just here. And just by subtly changing that, I'm starting to use or utilize certainly the stereo in its entirety by just panning these sounds individually. Now, one of these sounds is probably a little bit too much. So now perhaps we'll put the clap back up again, that's fine. Okay, let's uh, get our snare back. Perhaps we'll just ease off the bass drum. Perhaps that's a little easier on the ear. And let's just say there, if I want to cut out a sound without putting the volume down, because I, I may not want to move the volume because I've got it just about right, so I don't want to move it, but I can isolate it by pressing the M button or by pressing this button here, the blue button, that just supports our bass drum sound as you can hear. You've also got your tempo here which I'll show you and if I just left click and hold I can make that go a lot faster or of course slower. So I may want that to come down to say let's call it about 100 well come down to 102 the 100 100. I can change that. Now I can do various other tricks with this, but I'll go into that I think another time. Let's put it back up to where we were because that was just about right I think. Thank you for downloading and subscribing to Mac Junction. I'll meet you at that place again next time. Thank you now, bye bye.